Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session, Blockchain for Industry 4.0, a complete review. I am Pritama Chatterjee, and I'll be your host for the day. Our speakers for today's session are David Palmer, Blockchain Lead IoT, Vodafone Business, and Shani Bill, and Shani Bill Global Account Managers, Vodafone, uh, Vodafone Global Enterprises. Please note, the session will be on, uh, will be on listen-only mode for about 40 to 50 minutes, uh, minutes out of which the last 10 minutes will be dedicated to Q&A. Requesting all our participants to post your questions in our Q&A window. Also, there will be two criteria for, uh, for getting the certificate of attendance for this session. Firstly, you have to participate and attend the full session that includes the Q&A. You will also be receiving a survey, a survey form from EC Council tomorrow. Answer the three question, three questions that that has been given to us by our uh, uh, by our speakers, which will be depend uh, which will be based on this particular session. Answer the cor uh, give correct answers to all the three questions, and you will be receiving your certificate of attendance within five to six business uh, business days. Now, a bit about our speaker before we start, uh, before we hand over the session to them. David Palmer is the Vodafone Business IoT Lead for Blockchain. He has worked in IoT for about 10 years and has been instrumental in the Vodafone Business assessment. And exploration of blockchain technology and its potential to add value in the uh, Pitama, I, I think there's an audio error. We can't hear you properly. Pitama, can you hear us? The audio is cracky. So sorry, guys. Uh, just a technical error. Uh, Problem. Should Should we introduce ourselves? Or? Um, no, I'll do the needful. Just okay. give me a second. Thank you. Uh, so about our speakers today, David Palmer is Vodafone Business IoT Lead for Blockchain. He has worked in IoT for 10 years and has been instrumental in the Vodafone Business Assessment and exploration of blockchain technology and its potential to add value in IoT ecosystem. More recently, David has been exploring the application and integration of finance, payment and te teleco and technology in the emerging transition from IoT to economy of things. Saini is a global account director for Vodafone Global Enterprise, international public sector responsible for European Commission. She is helping public organizations succeed in digital world with an expertise in connectivity leading to IoT platform and Vodafone global scale. She supports delivering outcome-based results that organizations need to progress and thrive. Without further delay, uh, let, let me hand over the session to you, David and Shaini. Over to you guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So digital transformation affects our lives in many ways and we live in exciting times and um, it's really a way to help people uh, to get rid of intermediaries and users can now do things independently using a lot of different technologies. Often people wonder, you know, what is happening and what is industry 4.0? And during this European Council Cyber Talks, David and I will talk about Industry 4.0, what it is about the ecosystem and how it will shape our future. 
and we will talk about use cases in agriculture, in health, in uh, on about smart factories, finance, digital identity, and the economy of things. And uh, David, can you please start with an overview of Industry 4.0? Uh, yes, so, so, so Industry 4.0, um, are we going to go to the slide, the next slide? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes. <laughs> the Industry 4.0 is, is basically um, termed as the fourth industrial revolution. So um, uh, in manufacturing, especially, um, we're starting to look at how technologies and manufacturing can come together to increase automation. Um, so, so if you look at um, the sort of slide we have here, uh, you have technologies like big data analytics. Um, so, so that is where data is moving from uh, reactive data, where data is there for record keeping, to uh, where data is being used in the manufacturing process for um, analysis, diagnostics, and even predictive um, uh, uses. And then we have technologies like 3D printing, um, robotic process automation, um, uh, virtual reality, um, which is talking about a, a sort of interactive or simulated experience and augmented reality. Um, and, and you look at these technologies coming together, um, Internet of Things um, and, and indeed blockchain. And, and, and I suppose um, the discussion today is about, you know, how these things have come together uh, and how these technologies can come together in the future um, to reset the automation boundary for, for, for industry and manufacturing. And just wanted to, to, to really look at the Internet of Things. So um, I've, I've been working in uh, M2M, now the Internet of Things, for, for 10 years. And, and when we started off, it was um, more about connecting devices and um, you know, how we could connect these devices, how we could digitize them to produce data. Um, and, and this ranged from connected cabinets, cars. Um, you know, now we have drones, other smart city sensors. Um, and uh, the importance of it is is really about how you how you connect the world, especially um, in a um, sort of manufacturing to supply chain um, to, uh, to to smart city context. And um, now, uh, you know, uh, if you look at the numbers, um, I think we're, we're we're about 40 million connected devices now. Um, but I think the, the estimates in the next five to seven years are up to 70 billion connected IoT devices. Um, and and, and I, I think we could actually exceed that because um, on the one hand, you have estimates that each person will have 10 connected devices. Um, but but in business, where I think it's more relevant for industry 4.0, um, you know, you're starting to see uh, the, the, the device, connected devices, the data they produce and the interactiveness of these devices really uh, begin to um, integrate into business models. And I think uh, with COVID especially um, over the past um, sort of 12, 14 months, um, you know, we've seen an acceleration of um, sort of two to five years um, of, of, of the Internet of Things emerging and the use of data, especially in the vaccine distribution, et cetera. So, so, so the Internet of Things is largely about connected devices, um, producing data, and that data being managed uh, for organizations. And, and, and of course, we then go into the industrial uh, Internet of Things, which is um, where, where, where these sensors and connected devices and data are feeding into um, the manufacturing process. Um, when, when we look at um, IoT and how it supports uh, different use cases, um, one of them is obviously the connected um, the sort of connected farm. Uh, and, and in this sort of example, you have um, specifics of, you know, agricultural drones, which are connected. Um, you have plant sensors, um, agrobots, small tractors, farming data, all connected um, using, uh, in this case, Vodafone connectivity. Um, we, we also include the uh, precise positioning. And, and, and what this actually does, it allows the um, farmer to automate um, the, uh, the the agricultural uh, process from, from from seed to to harvest, um, and, and and in this case uh, you have um, you know um, the the sensors on the plants making sure it's getting enough light, making sure it's getting enough water, um, so so that the growing process can can, can be um, can can be perfected. But more importantly, that data 
and the, the estimates in, on, on harvest can be communicated to buyers and supply chains uh, so they can plan as well. Yeah, the, the, dr the drone in this case providing um, you know, a visual um, uh, view to, to, to support that data. Uh, another side of it, um, again, building on the Internet of Things, uh, it, you know, it is really about um, it's it's really about the, the the Internet of Things again, providing connectivity, providing data to devices. But in the, in this case, uh, it's slightly different because you have connected people, or, or connect, connected you know, the connected human, um, you know, who uh, you know with a smartphone and the or, or a smartwatch or both. Um, you know, can uh, you know uh, provide ongoing data on 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 health, uh, uh, you know, health health data or health health status. Um, but then linked to that, you can have um, supply chains linked to that, uh, monitoring linked to that, um, assistance and procedures, uh, planning based on that information. Uh, so so you start to get a smart um, uh, a smart supply chain of health. Um, which, um, which, which with data running from end to end, helping to plan, and we, and we again, we've seen um, with the recent pandemic, um, you know, the, the use of uh, you know, connected supply chains in you know in ensuring that you know vaccines are kept at the right temperature, um, that they're that they're hopefully in the right place at the right time. Um, but but um, you know, when when you start looking at this in a more normal environment, um, you know, you're, you're seeing that the data that is uh, produced from a connected person. Uh, you know, and, and, and connected manufacturing feeding into much supply chains can really bring about new levels of automation um, in healthcare. And this use case is about uh, the internet of production. So uh, the example here is a car manufacturer in Germany, in Aachen. And this is about a very small electric car that's manufactured in one of the most advanced pro production facilities worldwide. And the production is based on the Industry 4.0 approach, the complete digital integration of all production devices. And uh, the micro factory is one of the first uh, to be ready with 5G uh, technology. And it's part of a digital platform that we call the Internet of Production. And on this platform, all processes in the production cycle, in the development cycle, and during the product innovation, and in the user cycle, they are all fully integrated. So the Internet of Production controls and stores the history of every move and every part from the vehicle creation to reconditioning it and to the renewal. And this transparency of data from development to innovative production enables very efficient manufacturing, even for small volumes. So this um, enables the manufacturing to be faster and efficient and also can respond to changes uh, more quickly. And um, also the philosophy of micro factories, instead of the mega factories, um, they are you know, low cost and um, they can put up additional factories uh, really quickly, even in countries where they don't have an established uh, infrastructure yet. And um, this micro factory um, has got an uh, MPN, which means an, uh, a mobile private network, which is a combination with a public network and the IT network of uh, the car manufacturer. And this, uh, when you have both um, public and private connectivity, then this gives you, um, you know, higher speeds and more reliability, but also better quality of service and the operations can be streamlined. That processes which are not um, uh, that uh, important can be uh, done in uh, in downtime. And uh, it's a great example uh, that combines, uh, you know, technology with um, sustainability and um, the digital platform you know, helps seamlessly integrate the manufacturer cycle, the product life cycle, and also adding the, the user to this. And, and David, can you now explain about uh, blockchain? 
Sure. Uh, we go to the next slide. Um, so, so, so I suppose the talk today we 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 we've spoken a lot about Industry 4.0, and and basically replayed uh, some of what you you may know. So we know that factories are getting automated. Uh, we know that data is being produced now on a level. Um, that it hasn't in the last uh, so, so sort of um, 50 years. Indeed, most of the world's data have been produced in the last uh, five years. Um, and when we know that um, you know, these technologies are coming together at a pace that is unparalleled. Um, and I suppose the question now is, um, you know, what, what is blockchain and, and, and how can this play a role um, you know, going forwards in, in Industry 4.0? Uh, you know, we, we understand about data analytics. You know, we, we understand about AI and and and, and the importance of that. Um, you know, we understand about robotic process automation. You know, we understand about VR, AR. But what about blockchain? So, what is blockchain? So, blockchain at its very at its very simplest is a, a sort of chain of uh, historical records. Um, and um, you know, where a transaction um, is to be added to a blockchain, that transaction. Um, needs to be validated. Um, so that, that is validated um, using a, a consensus algorithm. Um, and that depends on the type of blockchain you have and the type of consensus algorithm you're using. But it, it, you know, at, at its most basic, there'll be a validation of, of the transaction. Once that, val uh, that transaction is validated, um, then it will be, uh, the block will be added to the chain. Um, the block with that transaction information will be added to the chain. And then at its simplest in a public full broadcast blockchain, it will be published to everyone in the, in, in the chain. Um, and then and, and that is blockchain. Why is it important? It provides trust. Um, so, so uh, you know, where you have an internal, internal organization, internal factory, internal industry, um, then, then there's trust there. But where you're starting to get dynamic supply chains, uh, linking with dynamic uh, inventory, uh, linking with dynamic production, um, linking with dynamic uh, 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 raw material um, uh, production, uh, th th then then if that's going to be dynamic, sometimes you don't know no no uh, or have a trust contract with the entity there, and that's where blockchain comes in because blockchain is immutable, um, because the records um, are historical, time stamped, and cannot be uh, changed. You know th there is the basis for 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 trust um, of uh, uh, provided by that blockchain, and and that is the the very in its very simplest term. If you actually look at a lot of the processes we have, the friction comes because we don't trust each other. So you know, if you go to the airport, why do you have to show your passport five times? It's because they don't trust, right? You know, you you, you need to be in a position to produce that document each time. Um, the same thing in in business. Why why are there credit checks? Why are there uh, multiple checks that something's where it needs to be? It's because you don't have trust. So the potential of introducing trust um, to uh, uh, industry, um, you know, has the potential inherently to increase the potential for automating processes. Um, the other thing is identity. Um, so, so in fact, I'll go to the next one first. So I'll just say digital automation. Um, so, sorry, not the previous slide. I haven't finished on that one. So apologies. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so, 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 so the other, the, the the other side of it is digital automation, which is smart contracts. Uh, very, very important um, because essentially what that's doing is is providing the potential for entities uh, in business, in industry, in supply chains, uh, in production, um, to be able to automate transactions with each other, um, zero touch. Uh, so the smart contract is a very important uh, uh, feature of blockchain, as is um, the ability uh, to have digital money or digital currency, which can be executed uh, based on the terms of a smart contract automatically. And the other one is digital identity, um, which is probably the, along with uh, provenance supply chains, the biggest use case in, uh, in sort of industrial blockchain. And, and this is where organizations and indeed people can have digital identities that they control. Uh, so, I mentioned the passport before, but it could be um, you know your uh, a company's credit score. It could be other information which can be part of a company identity or a person's identity. And, and the point here is that if it's on the blockchain, it's distributed. Um, you know, so it's so it's trusted. Uh, you know, the the, uh, the 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 attesters of the um, information in it. So it could you know, um, can can then validate that. 
And once that's verified, um, then essentially anyone who wants a claim or to see it uh, can automatically see see that. So digital identity, a big area as well. And then there's different types of blockchains. So you've got public blockchains versus permission versus hybrid. Um, public blockchains, Bitcoin, Ethereum are, are, are sort of the bi biggest and most well known. And then this means anybody can be a part of that blockchain. Anybody can use it. Anybody can be a part of the ecosystem. Permission blockchains tend to be um, faster. Uh, they tend to be more secure um, and they tend to therefore be used in business and enterprise more. Um, and you have, uh, you know, protocols, Hyperledger Fabric, in the uh, Aries, um, you know, uh, coming up who are, are examples of permission blockchains as well as some of the uh, permission blockchains on Ethereum. And then you have hybrid um, and the hybrid blockchains are emerging where you have uh, essentially uh, some part of the blockchain which is controlled. Um, but then some parts which are open to the public and, and that is emerging now as a, a sort of compromise between the two. Um, in terms of consensus, um, we, we spoke about the validation um, being key um, to, to blockchains to trust the information going in there. And, and then those validations, there's different ways of getting consensus. Um, the most popular is proof of work, uh, which is common on the, uh, and, that, and this is where you have miners who are rewarded for, for validating um, uh, blocks. Um, and, and, and they, um, and this is typical of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, but um, now you're starting to see some of these uh, blockchains move to a proof of stake. Um, blockchain um, essentially is where you have, as I said, a, a historical chain of records or blocks. Um, recently emerging now is DAG. Um, and, and this protocol is slightly different because uh, you only need to validate transactions uh, in there. So it's faster. And, and, and you've seen um, blockchains like IOTA uh, and Hashgraph come up, which are, are, are offering higher speeds, um, uh, you know, which is more supportive of uh, use cases like IoT. Uh, so if we could move to the next one. I've tried to do that as quickly as I can. <laughs> yeah, we, it's, um, it's so, okay. We still have 13 minutes. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, gosh, let's get moving. Uh, so, so economy of tokens, we, we sort of touched on this. So so, so the economy of tokens um, re re really um, you know, is, is something that, that is happening. So you, you, you'll know about Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and, and these tokens here. But, but now we're starting to see a lot of uh, companies um, generate their own tokens. And, um, you know, and, and, th and this is allowing for new transactions of value. Um, based on based on these tokens, um, one of the popular things you're seeing now is non-functional tokens, uh, which is where uh, people are um, tokenizing paintings. Uh, but but ultimately, you know, we work at our to tokenizing office space and, and transacting that. Um, so, so 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 the token economy um, seems to be something that has taken off in crypto in the crypto world. But more importantly, we're now seeing you know real companies um, start to start to look at tokens. Some of the headlines there. Um, you know, PayPal saying that they'll take uh, payment in uh, tokens and allow payment in tokens. Uh, more importantly, in industry, Tesla um, are now saying you can buy a, a Tesla in a Tesla car in uh, in Bitcoin. Um, so, so, so yeah, we're starting to see that move in industry. Next one, uh, Stani, I'll, I'll try and move through these as quickly as I can. Uh, digital identity, I think we've already covered. Let's go to the next one. Blockchain supply chains I've partly covered, but um, some of the real examples, uh, successful examples of this are um, uh, the Mask uh, IBM um, trade lens, uh, which is a supply chain for uh, shipping and logistics and um, with some trade finance in there, using the blockchain to automate the, um, the contracting and documentation of that. Um, and, and you're starting to see a lot more um, blockchain based supply chain provenance solutions come up in industry um, where essentially you have a number of uh, parties who are involved in, in, in supply chains um, and, and the blockchain providing a tri immutable layer of trust for the data along that supply chain. And, and the beauty of it is with smart contracts uh, and wallets and, and tokens and payments, you can actually automate the payment as well based on um, certain conditions in that supply chain being met. Uh, next one. Yeah, and, and vaccination, I was thinking, it's also an example, isn't it, David, for the supply chain, uh, which is I, a I, I example. Think a, I, think a, I think it's a really good example um, with the vaccines needing to be kept at a certain temperature. Um, the blockchain provides, um, you know, an immutable um, you know, ledger for, 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 for that data to be entered through uh, from manufacturing 
uh, through the distribution and logistics process um, to, to, to the vaccine being given. Uh, and uh, we're starting to see it used in that area as well. Indeed, we're involved. So yeah, yeah especially this stuff. month. Yeah, the cyber talks uh, especially talk about the consequences of pandemic. So therefore, I thought it was useful to uh, to mention. But we continue. Yes, um, uh, DeFi. So 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 all of the things we we've, we've mentioned in blockchain. You know, blockchain started off in finance. Um, and, and it's going in a circle to end in finance. Um, and, and one of the most exciting things uh, in blockchain at the moment is what we call decentralized finance. Uh, it's essentially um, where uh, you have functions that would be carried out by a bank like lending um, and, uh, and, and, and uh, investing um, being done and, and returns uh, being done by an algorithm on the blockchain. The most important part of this is two components of blockchain that, that, that are important, important to this. Number one is a token, so tokenization of assets. Um, and the, the, the next one is a smart contract to execute it. And, and those two elements are, are being fed into blockchain protocols. Um, some of the most um, popular ones, Uniswap, which uh, provides a, a sort of uh, exchange of tokens. Um, and then you have things like uh, consensus, uh, sorry, um, um, you, you've got some like um, uh, Yan, Yan and, and others uh, that are springing up the compound uh, that are springing up to provide returns on on, on those tokens um, in, in the crypto world. Uh, so, so watch out for this in industries. It's not entering the uh, enterprise world yet even though this week um the you know there was an organization that raised 121 million um uh in europe uh you know uh, issuing uh, bonds on the blockchain uh, but it's not uh you know decentralized finance is not uh popular at the moment but in industry but it will start to take off and we go to the next one so i suppose We've described uh, Industry 4.0 and we've described some of the key things of blockchain. And I suppose the question is, how do these things come together? Um, you know, how, how do we see blockchain playing a part in industry? And, and I think, uh, you know, the, these key components of the wallet, you know, the wallet holding identity, the wallet holding payment credentials, the wallet holding preferences, um, you know, is, is critical. Um, and then you have the smart contracts that, that execute uh, automatic key terms between entities, uh, the blockchain, which is a trust element and the digital identity of organizations and indeed their devices starts to play a real important role in, in terms of automating the interactions um, and, and any value transactions between uh, these things. So factories to supply chains to to uh, paying workers to paying for data to selling data uh, to buying connectivity all of this can be automated uh, with the blockchain providing a layer of trust um, but also providing a layer of automation um, and, and this is what we're starting to see in terms of examples uh, of, of this uh, we have the 5g factory but we're also starting to see uh, as we mentioned uh, blockchain based supply chains um, allow you know, new dynamic entrance to, to supply chains to fill gaps. Um, and I, I think going forwards, um, you know, that you know, peer to peer transaction between, uh, or, uh, you know, between devices and, and organizations and business uh, will, will start to move things forward. So we just go to the next slide. I'm just conscious we're running out of time. Oh, yes. With, apparently, we still have some extra time, uh, David. So ah, we okay. don't need to yeah. be, uh, we still have another 10 minutes. Okay, no problem. Um, so, so, so in terms of what we've been doing, um, yeah, we, we showed the slide earlier of the Internet of Things. And the Internet of Things, as I said, uh, we're, in the next five to seven years, we're expecting 70 billion um, connected devices. So if we look at the world population at roughly 8 billion now, uh, just on the, you know, you've got roughly 10 times the amount of things connected as you do people. Um, and, and, and it's a it's a big opportunity. It's a big, um, it's also a big challenge um, and a big driver for change and automation in, in industry. Um, and as we, as, as we look at this, um, our stance has been to say, okay, um, you know, we, we've spent uh, a lot of time connecting devices and producing data you know, going forwards with the devices increasing, um, with, with technology increasing, uh, with, with use cases becoming more dynamic, we're expecting 
devices to interact more. So no longer will devices um, and sensors just produce um, data and send it to their owner, um, you know, the, 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 the entity that owns them. But we're, we're expecting that you know, in the future, and even now, uh, that devices will start to have to interact with other devices. So in the previous picture, we showed drones, uh, robots, um, et cetera. You know, what, what, you're starting to see these devices actually speak directly to each other. And uh, and and we, we we and they can actually transact with each other as well. So our our tact on that has been to um, enhance our, our our SIM connectivity um, to include um, number one a link to the blockchain. So as well as providing connectivity, um, you know, um, in, in terms of uh, you know connecting devices, um, you know, and providing that uh, we, we're also providing a connection to the blockchain uh, via our SIM card. Uh, and, and, and with that, we're also providing a wallet uh, uh, via our SIM card and, and uh, a digital identity via our SIM card. Uh, and what does that mean? It means that um, any device, um, you know, with this uh, with this form of connectivity, can connect to a blockchain. Um, they can be part of supply chains. They can authenticate into supply chains. They can authenticate into manufacturing processes. They can authenticate into other business and logistics processes automatically, uh, and they can transact uh, connecting to the blockchain to execute smart contracts. Uh, so, so, th so this is sort of our position on it. Uh, if you look at the bottom, it says connectivity plus trust, i.e., blockchain plus payment capability plus marketplace equals the economy of things. And uh, we, we think that um, a key development of the industry 4.0 will be this economy of things. It will be you know, devices uh, transacting with devices automatically, peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, using the blockchain as the anchor of trust, uh, using, um, I forgot to mention, um, sort of cryptography. So we have a private key in the SIM which essentially gives the devices um, you know, the means to digitally sign uh, the transactions. And, and, we, and we're really excited that this could be um, the future of, um, of extending that automation boundary. Um, if we look practically 70 billion devices, there's not enough of us to sit in, uh, in between them with smartphones validating. Uh, so this sort of auto automation is something that will need to happen uh, going forward. So then we go to the last slide now. Yes. Okay, so, so we just wanted to, to maybe um, look at some of the use cases um, you know, that, that you can have. So I, I think number one- just, um, Before you continue, so, David, can you please explain DAB? What does it mean? The transaction life cycle on the DAB? The, the oh, digital okay, asset okay. Broker, that, that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a digit, it's digital asset broker. So it, it's just the product we have in this area. Um, oh, okay. uh, but, uh, but, but yeah, um, th th this is really looking at smart cities. So if you look in there, you've got the connected factory, digital supply chains, uh, you know, network as a sensor, uh, which is another initiative where, um, you know, within a, 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 you know, within a network, um, if you put sensors at the end of them, essentially you've got massive reach in terms of uh, the sort of information you can collect and exchange. Um, you've got connected car, connective, uh, connected fleet, uh, connected person, connected organization, uh, geolocation, shared mobility, smart buildings. These are all the things that are happening now. And uh, you know what we're saying is where you put that on a blockchain, uh, you're then able to have um, you know, trusted data sharing. Um, you know, if you combine that with uh, IoT, uh, you're able to have what we call asset as a service. So where uh, machines uh, in in manufacturing and industrial processes, um, you know, can be identified immutably uh, using the private key uh, connecting uh, the machine and the SIM card, um, and uh, the, 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 you know that, that that machine can can sign um, you know that that it is the machine, but also we can verify the output of that machine, um, and you know, and giving rise to new forms of financing. You've got, as I mentioned, automated uh, peer-to-peer -peer transactions. You've got interoperable supply chains uh, from thing to thing, uh, from from ecosystem to ecosystem. Uh, only able, and we're only able to do this because the blockchain is able to act as a middleware of trust um, between those supply chains, between those companies, between those ecosystems in a dynamic way. You don't have to go through six months of contracting. Uh, you can just use the blockchain um, to provide that and uh, and the necessary validation and security um, that comes with that. Um, so, so yeah, I'd, I'd say some exciting times um, going forward, and we're starting to see some of this come as well come through um, uh, in, in recent years. 
Uh, one of the things we, we maybe forgot to mention, Sani, is, is 5G uh, and LPWA. So, so, so two important, probably the most important aspects of this for us. Uh, but 5G providing uh, low latency, um, you know, high speed communication on the move, um, which uh, allows things like AR, VR, uh, to be possible, um, and, and also uh, you know, other forms of automation to be possible um, that, that are supporting some of these use cases, um, as well as blockchain. So five G, um, you know, launched. I think we launched uh, last year or within the last year and a half. Um, you know, very very important uh, in terms of uh, providing high speed connectivity everywhere. And LPWA is really about low power uh, wide area networks. So this is where. Uh, you've got devices that don't need um, to be powered and uh, and connected all the time, and LPWA uh, provides um, a means of of doing that so that so it's not draining the power uh, for that device. And there are two critical connectivity enablers to uh, the the industry 4.0, uh, but we feel that when you combine uh, blockchain, IoT, um, and AI uh, with 5G, uh, you have a powerful enabler to take industry 4.0 forwards. Thank you. Great, thanks very much, David. So, uh, Pritama, will we now take the questions? Yes, uh, thank you so much, David and Shiny. It was such an informative session and uh, we have lots of questions pouring in actually. But before we go uh, for the questions, we just have a few things to remind our audience. So this session um, is in sync with EC Council Certified Blockchain Professional Certification, uh, which is a certification that covers everything you'll need to kickstart your career into the blockchain world. It covers the fundamentals such as crypto assets, uh, blockchain mining to advance the concepts such as IoT, blockchain, security in blockchain, and much more. It also trains you hands-on on the practical training to solve industry use cases, build your decentralized applications, and anyone with the EC Council CBP certification is eligible for 48,000 plus job vacancies globally with an average salary of 90,000 per annum. So do let us know if you would like uh, uh, to opt for this courses. Our poll will be live. Do let us know your opinion on this. Also, uh, put in your questions and we can now ask those to David and Shiny. Okay, let's move on. Mm. So there's a question from Nitin Varma. He says, how is IoT security processing in blue team and red team activity? David, David could sorry, you ask I, I, question? Uh, she answered that question. Sorry, I didn't get the question, guys. How is IoT security progressing in the blue team and red team activity? Yeah, I'd have to defer that to our security guys. I mean, what what I do know is that um, blockchain security, uh, yeah, is so. So in terms of IoT, um, you know, one of the reasons why we've been successful is that we're able to use the cryptography associated with um, with with our telco network, um, and and there's uh, you know, there's a number of encryptions that we we, we employ um, to 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 execute that. But in in terms of the blockchain. Um, what what it does um, is 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 kind of guard against the the DDoS um, attacks by 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 um, allowing or supporting distributed data um, data, uh, data databases and um, also uh, you know the distributed ledger with that. So 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 in terms of um, security, um, uh, you know, we, we believe that the blockchain. Uh, based security um, by by decentralizing can can mitigate some of the um, some some of the uh, security issues associated with IoT. Uh, in terms of the specifics of that, though, I'd have to maybe get back. One become going? a blockchain developer. Where do you start? Huh. Sunny, do you want? Yeah, I'll take that one again. So, 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 so the yeah, it, it's interesting. I mean, for what one of the most important languages uh, in blockchain is Java, and for smart contracts, Solidity. Um, I've I've seen many um, a, a a a a a developer with Java uh, be able to make um, make the move into programming, uh, you know, in blockchain very very quickly. So, so I'd, I'd say um, learn Java. Um, learn solidity for smart contracts 
and, and that would be a, a good uh, way forward. So you you got to remember that blockchains, you know, largely use some of the same technology. So there's still the APIs, um, you know, that, that, that are used. Um, you know, there's still front end applications that are developed. Um, you know, there's still databases that are that are part of the the solutions that blockchain supports. Um, so a lot of the the skills that developers may already have are good fits, um, you know, to, to to blockchain development. But but um, the sort of killers or you know the sort of important things are obviously the smart contracts in Solidity, uh, and um, also the Java um, uh, for 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 actually programming uh, in the ledger. So so that would be my start. Learn Java, learn learn Solidity, um, and uh, and get involved, volunteer for a project. Uh, you know, there's a lot of demand now. Okay. Sure, thank you. Another one by Kasturi is, uh, what is an interoperable supply chain? Okay, yeah, so interoperable just means that you have uh, supply chains that, that that can basically swap out um, elements of that supply. Um, so, so, so if you think about it, why, you know, just think about what we've been through in the pandemic, pandemic with PPE, uh, you know, in, in most countries and now with vaccine supply. And part of it is because, um, you know, the contracts for, for supplying need to be uh, written in stone and you're dependent on one, uh, in a lot of cases, one uh, supplier to make it. You don't have the ability if that supplier can't make it or one element of, of that can't make it to swap it or interoperate for another supplier uh, and, and, and auction that, uh, the, the, that that element of the supply chain. So interoperable just, just basically means there's a supply chain where you have a dynamic element that allows elements of the supply where one fails to, to, to be filled by another very quickly, automatically. Thank you. Another one is, uh, does one has to be working in security for some time to get transitioned into blockchain career-wise? Uh, no. Um, so, so, so I think one of the beauties of blockchain is that, um, you know, some people who aren't even from a technical background have managed to, to make the tradition into blockchain. And, and there's different areas of it. Um, so you have uh, blockchain-based security, uh, you have blockchain development. Um, you know, you, as I say, you've got the areas around blockchain in terms of application, UI, UX, wallet development, payments um, that, that, that all come into it. But then there's also the business modeling side um, you know, the, the, there's uh, you know, uh, revenues, um, you know, there's organizational sites. So, so there's always, you know, it's a business like anything else and it's got, and it's got business models attached to it. So, so there's a number of areas where you can get involved. I, I think security um, experts or cybersecurity is a key part of blockchain. Um, and uh, I, I think it's very easy for, for someone who has an aptitude um, and or experience in that to make the transition. Sure. Another question uh, is a very legal question, actually. Is blockchain legal in Gulf countries? <laughs> uh, so, so what, what I can say is that um, one of the, the leading countries for blockchain adoption is Dubai. And uh, you, you saw the Dubai uh, 2020 vision and the, the sort of um, Dubai blockchain um, government uh, vision or 2020, and they've really been leading the way um, in blockchain and other technologies. And, and I believe um, are the first government to implement uh, a lot of blockchain-based solutions as part of their, their governmental processes. Um, so, so I would say definitely in Dubai, um, it's legal. If, you, if you're talking about the cryptocurrency side of blockchain, because there's two sides, you've got blockchain, the technology, uh, which Dubai, Dubai are, are, um, are using, uh, and then you've got the cryptocurrencies, which is an application that runs on blockchain. In terms of cryptocurrencies, the legality of that and the regulations differ. Um, what I would refer you to are the FA, FATF um, uh, papers on, 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 on cryptocurrency regulation and cryptocurrency exchanges, which, which could be more uh, informative about the different areas. But, but uh, in terms of blockchain technology, uh, Dubai are, are leading the way uh, and uh, are, are definitely setting a great example. Sure. Nishan says, uh, actually very connected, uh, AWS and Google Cloud solutions are fine to implement blockchain? Are they fine to yeah, implement I mean, the blockchain? Are, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, um, what, what has been important to, uh, you know, to, to blockchain adoption uh, our organizations like like ours and, and other big hyperscale organizations 
um, really taking the um, technology seriously, but more important, making it more accessible. Um, so if you look at um, AWS, uh, etc., absolutely fine to to have uh, to have that approach. And indeed, most of the leading solutions uh, and industries are, are using it. Sure. Um, now, Kishwar has a very um, technical question, which is, with central banks around the world dabbling with blockchain technology, do you think we will see more nationally regulated hybrid currencies coming into play? Great question. Great question. So, 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 so one of the so what you're talking about is what we call central bank digital currencies (CBDCs). Um, and indeed, very timely, uh, the Bank of England uh, last week um, announced that it was it had a two-year program uh, to implement the digital currency. We're seeing the same thing in the U.S. Uh, and other governments around the world. So, um, definitely the U.K., definitely European Union. Uh, have have set targets to 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 look at this and explore the central bank digital digital currencies, as have the U USA, um, and I believe uh, there's other governments around the world that have sent uh, sets uh, and sent and their central banks that have set similar targets, and and, and the reason for it is that it, it you know again um, having a digital currency uh, and blockchain technology and, and and a central bank digital currency can be implemented without blockchain. Yeah, that, that, that's the first thing I want to say. Um, but but having um, a sort of blockchain-based uh, digital currency allows for a lot of automation um, and 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 a lot more transparency and a lot more. Um, there's, there's a lot more um, uh, yeah, you can do with it uh, from a central bank point of view. So so yeah, it's one of the hottest areas, um, central bank digital currencies, and uh, let, let let's see where it goes. Uh, but but uh, what I can say for certain, UK, Europe, US have made commitments to this. Sure. Now, uh, the question here from Hassan is, how regulatory bodies are responding to blockchain and growing fintech companies that are using blockchain technologies? Now, this differs from country to country, right? The... Correct, correct. So, 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 so what we saw, um, what we've seen recently is Turkey, uh, where um, a, a lot of, uh, well, a few exchanges um, uh, you know, I, I won't say have disappeared with with, with with the contents of the exchange, but uh, you know, th there's been issues with exchanges, and and they have um, you know, taken a hard regulatory approach to that. Uh, on the other hand, um, you know, we've seen the FATF, um, uh, who have uh, so, you know, I think two years ago they wrote a paper, uh, sort of talking about um, you know, cryptocurrencies and the exchanges needing to go through KYC and, and needing to adhere to the travel rule. Um, but but going forwards, um, they recently, again, two, three weeks ago, issued uh, something extending that into decentralized exchanges. So I spoke about DeFi. And one of the key things in DeFi is having a decentralized exchange. So there's no there's no uh, person in there or no organization. You know, banking is being done by an algorithm. And uh, they, they've said that doesn't matter. And, uh, you know, you still need to have somebody who's responsible. Um, so so they've, they've provided some guidance to that. Um, uh, recently, uh, but then uh, in the in the US, um, you know, there, there's uh, you know there, there's an approach which is saying, okay, let's see where DeFi, DeFi runs, um, and then uh, we, we'll start to look at it afterwards. So you're seeing different regulatory approaches, um, but I, I I would say um, again, just check out the FATF uh, latest uh, update to to um, uh, cryptocurrencies um, for for the latest regulations. Because, because most of the banks and countries will follow that. Okay, um, I think last two questions. Uh, what are the current loopholes in IoT uh, that the industries are struggling with? Any loopholes <laughs> in the industry? <laughs> Loopholes. So, so IoT, like any to, like any technology, is evolving very, very quickly. Um, and and uh, I'd like to say that um, you know it's uh, we, we cope well with the security and, and scale aspect of that. Uh, the, you know, uh, the, there's million. I mean, even the, with our organization, we have 130 million connected devices uh, on our, on our platform, and and there's similar. You know, worldwide, it's running into billions uh, of devices. Yeah, you know, IoT devices. So, I'd like to say from a security point of view. Uh, it's done well. Uh, if, you, if you look at the vision we have for for value exchange, then, then then they become more of a target, and that's why it's important to have you know solid cryptography and and uh, and, and and blockchain supporting that uh, to make sure that we've got the security. 
um, uh, associated with it. So, for example, you know, we, we look to have secure elements and, and private keys um, as part of it. But but I'd say in terms of loopholes, um, you know, it's a growing industry, but we haven't seen anything significant uh, at this stage yet. But that doesn't mean we it doesn't it doesn't mean that uh, security doesn't need to evolve as more is done uh, with IoT devices. Right. Uh, the last question by Heiko is, do you see any interference of blockchain technology usage, uh, for example, contract supply chain management and financial management, uh, that's Bitcoin, or is it independent? So, uh, could you repeat the question? I missed that one. Okay. Do you see any interference of blockchain technology usage, for example, contract supply chain management and financial management? Uh, is there any interference between the two? Or is it independent? Um, I, I mean, I, I see them merging. So, 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 so I see blockchain more and more being interwoven with uh, supply chain management, contract management, uh, where you have two organizations that don't trust each other, which is generally how business works. Uh, you do have trust in terms of contracts that take a while to set up, but where you have this sort of new dynamic business that is coming up, um, I'm seeing that blockchain uh, will work to um, to support these. And indeed, uh, you'll see that these um, th th these use cases will, will, will actually be applications that involve a blockchain. Um, one of the recent things I, I was looking at was insurance, and now you've got this concept of decentralized insurance trying to emerge, where um, essentially you have um, you know entities that can come together to provide liquidity, i.e., a pool to cover insurance, and then you have uh, and they can uh, stake their money and get a return on it, um, and then you have that pool being used to provide, uh, for example, insurance for smart contracts and other things. So what you're seeing is that you're having uh, you know a lot of the traditional functions springing up uh, as as blockchain applications to provide some sort of uh, choice uh, to users. So I fully expect the blockchain will start to have applications that support that. Whether it's better than the uh, the current applications, we, we need to look at uh, that on a case-by-case -case basis. Sure. Just one last question for me, I think. <laughs> this is by Ramon, but I also want to know more about it. What is the important advantages of 5G technology? Some of the people need to upgrade their mobile phones to access 5G. What do you recommend? Sunny, do you want to cover? Do you want me to cover the one? Yeah, well, it's um, so for a while they will be, you know, those technology will be uh, working alongside. So uh, speed is, is one of the things, but especially for industry, the lower latency is really important. And I wouldn't say it's so much uh, in this context uh, about, um, you know, the devices, but it's more, uh, I mean, about the handsets. Uh, but this is more of the industrial devices where it's really important that the latency is so much lower that um, that you can also have quality of service. So currently in the mobile network, we cannot give you a guaranteed quality of service because it's you know the radio. But in 5G is the first time we can do it, and um, and and the speed and at least um, you know the much lower latency will make that. Uh, the devices in the factories can really become a part of the total uh, production process. But perhaps you want to add uh, something to it, uh, David? No, no, I, I, I think that's that, that, that's that, that's perfect. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, I just say I've, I've just got a new 5G phone. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it's, you know, it, it depends, of course, what you do. But on the on the device itself, it's um, mm. yeah, of course, it makes a difference if you want to do big data uh, transfers and um, it, it, with vol volume of data. But um, in this context, it's more important, I think, for the industry uh, on on the other uh, devices. Correct, yeah. correct. Correct. Yes. Thank remote, you so uh, much, guys. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, just uh, I, I think this question, uh, we still have more questions that uh, are coming in and we will address them one-on-one, uh, -on -one, guys. Or you can write to us at connect at ecouncil.org for more uh, questions. But thank you so much, David and Shiny. It was such an informative session. And I think we all conclude, uh, the participants as well as, as uh, the organizers, that we need to have a one more round of blockchain webinar with you guys on a different aspect of it obviously where we can discuss more in detail um, there are some of the questions which need 
they they need small small details about so uh thank you again it was such an informative session yeah. uh, for beginners especially uh, we have a lot of people who want to start their career in blockchain and this webinar does help them a lot thank you so much for being on board it was such a pleasure to have you thank you thank you thank you very much it was thank our you. pleasure all ours thank you have a nice day thank you thank you so Bye. much thank you for all of our pod, uh, participants to joining in thank you you may now disconnect the lines <laughs>